matter is, this Halloween, we are will be showing Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein, and we will be showing Frankenweenie. <laughs> That's interesting. We make the triple bill. <laughs> um, before we start with Corpse Bride, I really would, we need, would love to hear from you as much as you have to say, if you can deep, dig deep into your memory about Frankenweenie. Oh boy, well that was, you know, that was the first real live action film I made and I, I was just so lucky because I was at Disney at a time when not, not much was going on. So the opportunity to make a short film was so amazing and you know, like the Frankenstein story was like one of my favorite movies growing up and one of my favorite stories. And you know, also you go through your life and you have a dog that dies somehow the, the two things connected to me and the idea of sort of doing the Frankenstein story but with a dog you know which is so close to my heart and also using the, all the original Frankenstein equipment that, that Kenneth Strick fed we got to use some person had it in a warehouse all the original stuff from Frankenstein so that was like such an amazing thing to be able to, to see that stuff and work with all that electrical equipment so the dog was actually based on your own dog? Yeah, uh, a couple of dogs I'd had, yes. Did you they know, have and, names? Well, one was named Pepe, and the other, it was mainly that dog, because that was the one that I grew up, it was my childhood friend. How old were you at the time? When, when, when he died? When you made Frank. Oh, Frank, I was 20, well, made Vincent when I was 21, so it was like 22 or 23. So how did you manage to get it done? Well, that's the amazing thing. I stood, to this day, it was, it was luck because uh, they just, uh, I, I had the opportunity to make that film Vincent. And, and, and from that, then they just said, uh, they had the idea at the time to do like a, a featurette, which they used to do in the old days before they'd show it before like an animated film because animated films were short. They do like, you know, Coug you know, the crazy cougar that goes to Hollywood or, you know, you know, some kind of nature short. So they said, well, why, you know, gave me the opportunity to say, you know, we'll release this in front of Pinocchio. But it got kind of, a, it kind of freaked people out. So they never released it in front of Pinocchio. But, you know, it's, it got me the opportunity to make other films. So that was good. So how did you get your hands on all the uh, Frankenstein electrical stuff? This guy in the valley had it, kept it. He ha had it for many, many, for all these years. And, uh, you know, I think, they used, I think they used it on young Frankenstein as well. But, you know, it, it wasn't much call for it, <laughs> you know. But uh, I had found out about it, and, and we just uh, rented it. And, uh, and uh, amazing, really amazing to see it in real life. How much did the James Whale films influence you? Oh, well, he was incredible. I think, you, you know, he, he was one of the directors, that as you get older, you see his work, and, you know, when you see it as a child, it's scary, but then as you go older, you see all of the, the humor and, and, the, and, the, and the weirdness. He was a very modern director for his time, I think, all the, the movies that he did. So from there, many years ago, to Corpse Bride. It's been a long road. Hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, but it's great. I mean, I feel so grateful and lucky to, because I do love this technique. Yeah, you know, grew up watching Ray Harryhausen movies, and from that moment on, it's just something very emotional and beautiful about this technique. And you know, to to, to be able to do it with, you know, with all computers and other things going on is a, is a, a you know real special thing for us. I was talking to Mike Johnson just now, and mm. really, so it boils down to even though, okay, there's a long time between one movement and another movement, what we end up seeing is kind of, if you exclude those pauses, yeah. is, is essentially real time. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the actual making of the movie, you know, I mean, the, the 10 years it took to get going is, is more of a process that doesn't really mean much. It, it, the fact of the matter is, once we went into production on this movie, it was fairly quick, and... Uh, it really has to do with timing, and that's why I think it takes so long. It's because there's not that many people that do this type of animation. There's only, you know, and also the people that make the puppets. There's such a special, I mean, there's such pieces of art, and they're so intricate and so amazing that it, it's, it's, it is kind of a lost art in a way. Well, you're not, you're keeping it alive, clearly. Well, trying in to, the yeah. This yeah, is uh, the second after Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm seeing a, a counter, and I'm seeing PR people, so <laughs> I have to stop. Ciao. Just to